Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna, and another episode in the uh, Copper State Railway Phase 1 F3 build. Ooh, got that one out. So I'm going to try to keep these videos a little bit shorter, get right to the point, show you what I'm going to do, do it, close it out. And I'm not going to I'm not going to try to do multiple things in one video, just one subject item at the, at one time. So right now, moving on, I've got the truck side frames all done and ready for, um, what would you call it, uh, pre-weathering paint, I guess. So let me get the camera set up over here, show you what I've done to the trucks, and explain what's going to happen. All right, so here's the three sets of trucks. you got an A unit set an A unit set and a B unit set. And you'll notice the B unit sets, they don't have a speed recorder on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these aside and I'll pick up one with the speed recorder on it. Oh, real quick, before I put those all aside, you'll notice that all the journals are the same. So even with a speed recorder, you've got a box, 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 slope, 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 slope. But when you switch those around, so if this was the front of the locomotive, you're going to have a box slope, slope box. So no matter which way you put these, they're always going to be that way. Now all bets are off when they go through a rebuild or, or a, you know, a truck service or whatever. You can get them on any combination. But typically, as delivered, they're going to be like this. So you got the front of the locomotive here, you're going to have box, slope, slope, box. The box typically has the speed recorder in it like you see here. And then, <coughs> excuse me, on the rear trucks, you're also going to have box, slope, slope, box. <clears throat> so this is the rear of the locomotive. So let me pick one of these up and zoom in and I'll show you what has been done to these trucks. And I'll take a, a speed recorder one so that that's the difference on the other two. So let me zoom in. Let me see if I can get this in focus. Here we go. That's good. Let's zoom in a little bit more. All right. So these all started with, um, let me get the light over here more. These all started off with um, uh, a Hyatt roller bearings. So I had to cut the Hyatts off and then these are the Athern parts and I glued the Athern parts back on. So this is the box. This speed recorder um, I 3D printed. This is what the this is what my group of speed recorders looks like. It's on a bunch of bases and I just clean them up, cut them off and glue them in. Now I have this drilled out and typically I put a speed recorder cable on it now, but this time I'm, gonna, I'm not going to. I'm going to um, paint all this, that way I don't paint the cable. <clears throat> and then when it's ready to put the cable on, <coughs> excuse me, I'll grit blast the cable and then I'll glue it in and then I can weather it all together. All right, so, um, so I've got the a box, the slope, um, this um, brake line is from Atlas. I have a bunch of those, but you could also make it out of brass. Other thing that I've done is I've put the retainer bolts on the bottom of the journal. I call them journal keepers, but I've got the retainer bolts. Those are um, Detail Associates NBWs. Let's see, I've got brass. I've um, 25 thousandths phosphor bronze wire center drilled with a 12 thousandths pin on the end because I'll be putting sanding hose um, hoses on here and I'll use the um, from Miniatronics ultra flexible wire this stuff right here <clears throat> I'll strip the wire out of it and I can slip that right over this pin and then it forms really really nicely okay some other features that I've got on here and I, I never noticed this before until um, last week when I went to the uh, National Train Show. I visited a friend in Illinois, stayed with them, and I took a trip or a couple trips down to Carbondale. They have a GP11 down there. And this is the first time I noticed it, and I'm surprised I've never noticed it before. 
but there are casting holes here, here, and on top of the spring hanger um, bracket. So those holes, this casting hole and this casting hole, are two and three quarter inch diameter, and these two casting holes are one and a quarter inch diameter. So I drilled these out with 32 thousandths, and I drilled these out with 15 thousandths. Actually, one and a quarter inch comes out to about 14 thousandths, but I didn't have a 14 thousandths drill bit, so I used 15 thousandths on that one. So that is pretty much it for the side frames. The next step is to do the pre-weathering paint, which I'm, what I mean by that is paint them the, um, the rust colors that I want. <clears throat> that way I can hairspray them and then do a little tiny bit of chipping. I don't want to do a lot of chipping, but I just want to do a little lip or a very, very small amount in specific areas to bring out the um, character in the truck. And that's one thing I wanted to mention too. Oh, another thing I do, I dude, I, another thing I did when I drilled these holes out, I also, this is the same size hole right here. So I just clean those out also. Those are put in with a taper so that they can come out of the mill, I'm sorry, out of the mold better. So I just um, open them up just a little bit to give them more character. So putting those holes in there actually gives the truck a lot more character. And I think it'll look really nice once it's all set up. So that's pretty much all that I've done with the trucks. And like I said, it's time to get to painting these. Okay, so that takes care of building or detailing the truck side frames. Um, I, I know it took a little bit longer to get this video done, but I knew that I was going to the National Train Show and I'll be visiting Carbondale. And the reason actually I went to Carbondale was to get the um, step well dimensions for when I build my GP7s. But it was a blessing in disguise because I saw that extra detail on the trucks. And um, I'm really glad that I waited before I got them painted and, and such. I kind of procrastinated a little bit working on the gondola model and working on a few other models. But um, I'm gonna, this is my primary project and I'm just gonna keep going on these trucks. So like I said, the next step is to put the pre-weathering or the pre-chipping colors on and then get them painted black and, and chip them off. And that will be the next video.